Hey there, students. In this clip, we're going to be going over an example on how to connect the graph of um, connect um, f prime and f double prime with the graph of f. Okay. So for this problem, we're going to do we're going to answer questions a to b. For a, we're going to find all critical points um, and potential points of inflection. For b, we're to generate the sign table for f prime and f double prime. For c, we're to use the first derivative test and contact concavity test. And uh, part B to find uh, where the function is increasing, decreasing, its extrema and concavity. And in part D, we're to sketch um, a possible graph of F. All right, so the function on the consideration for problem number one is F of X equals three X squared minus three X to the third and it's on the interval uh, negative one to two. Okay, all right. Now um, let's start with part A. For part A, we're to find the critical points. Okay, so what again are the critical points? Well, the critical points are uh, the points where the derivative, where f prime, is it equal to zero or non-existent, where it does not exist, okay? Remember your derivative fails to exist when you have um, a vertical tangent, uh, a discontinuity, a cross or a corner, okay? All right, so to find uh, the critical points, what we're going to do is find the first derivative. So uh, f of x, we write the function is equal to 3x squared minus 3x to the third. First derivative, f prime of x. Um, we use the power rule here. Let's write that. Um, <clears throat> the first derivative, f prime of x, is going to be um, 6x minus 3 times 3, 9x squared. All right. Now, to find um, the critical points, we need to break it into two cases. We need to find where f prime of x is equal to 0. And then, secondly, we need to find where f prime uh, does not exist. Okay? <clears throat> now, if you look at this problem, we know that, that this is the graph of the quadratic function. And we know that the, the function of a quadratic nature does not have discontinuities, corner, cost, or vertical tangents. So, we know that um, <clears throat> it's always existent. So where does f prime non-existent? Never. It's always existent. So that means um, we're going to focus our attention on where um, f prime is equal to zero. Okay. All right. So in order to solve for the x values to satisfy this equation, we're just going to set the derivative 6x minus 9x squared equal to zero and solve this resulting quadratic equation. All right, so um, let's see. I can factor out 3x from the left side. Let's factor out 3x. And now we're left with 2 minus 3x equals 0. And then we're going to use the zero product property. We can set both factors to 0. 3x equals 0. And 2 minus 3x equals 0. If I divide both sides by 3 here, I'll have x equals 0 of my first critical point. In this side, if I add 3 to both sides and divide by uh, 3, I'll have x equals um, 2 over 3. All right, so uh, critical points. Critical points um, are at x equals 0 and 2 thirds. So that's that for the first part of part A. Now part B, I mean, in second part of part A, we also have to find potential points of inflection. Okay, let's go ahead and find that. Potential points of inflection. You have to be careful here when you're uh, finding a potential point of inflection. It's called potential for a reason. Okay. So to find potential points of inflection, we're going to find uh, where the second derivative is equal to zero. All right, um, where f double prime equals zero. 
Okay, now what you want to note is that the word potential is used here because if the second derivative is zero, that does not automatically mean it's a uh, point of inflection, it's a potential. They must be changing concavity first um, or the sign of the second derivative in order to arrive at that conclusion. All right, so our potential points of inflection, um, we had the original function was 3x squared minus 3x to the third. We found the first derivative, f prime of x, to be 6x minus 9x squared. But we need the second derivative to find our potential point of inflection. So what we're going to do here is differentiate, uh, differentiate the first derivative. So we'll have f double prime of x is equal to, if you differentiate this, I use the power row, um, this becomes 6 minus 18x, all right? So there goes your second derivative. Now to find the potential point of inflection, we need to find where uh, where f double prime of x is equal to zero, okay? So to do this, we're going to set um, the result of our second derivative, six minus 18x equal to zero, and solve this resulting linear equation. If we, um, Add 18x to both sides, we have 18x equals 6. Divide both sides by 18, you have x equals 6 over 18, which reduces 2, so by top and bottom by 6, 1 over 3. Okay, so potential point of inflection um, is at x equals 1 third. All right, so there goes the second answer for part A. All right, now let's uh, shift our attention to part B. We are to make a sign chart um, for F prime and F double prime. Okay, so part B. Now, there are different ways to uh, create a sign chart. I have a unique design here, which I think you might like. So, um, so how I design it is I like to draw two identical number lines, all right? Um, how do I calibrate my um, values? Well, we have a closed interval from, uh, let's go back up, from one, negative one to two. So I'm starting from negative one, closed circle, negative one. Now all the way to two, but how many, how do I want to calibrate my tick marks? What I do is I look at my critical points and points of inflection, and I want to use the um, lowest common denominator of the denominators of um, the fractions to uh, determine my basis for calibration, okay? Whole numbers have a denominator of one, so I don't need to bother myself with that, all right? So this is a good problem because we have three and three, and the LCD of three and three is just uh, three, okay? So three tick marks is going to be one full unit, so I'm going to have, um, let's see what we have here. Uh, one, two, three, that's going to be zero for me. And then one, two, three, that'll be one. And then one, two, three, that'll be two. Okay, so we have a close interval here. All right, and then I'm going to draw my line. Okay, so that's my first um, interval. This one that I just drew is for... Um, f prime. So this is for um, f prime. Okay. All right. And then uh, the other one is going to be for f double prime. But let's focus our attention on f prime first. The sign of f prime. Put the number down here. Negative one. Okay. So what we have here is um, we have to we have to graph the critical points, okay, because we know that um, the critical points are related to the first derivative, okay, so, um, you know what, let me call this sine of f prime, sine of f prime, okay, all right, now we're going to graph, um, let me graph the intervals and also the um, critical points uh, on this interval right here. All right, I just shifted it uh, a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so now, let's see. So 
So um, let's grab the upper and lower intervals. So it starts from negative 1. Just going to draw a line going up. Negative 1 all the way to 2. Those are included. And then um, the first critical point was 0. And the second critical point was 2 thirds. So 1, 2, 3. This is the second critical point right here. All right. Okay, so now we're going to look for um, the sine of f prime. In order to determine the sine of f prime on these intervals, uh, what we're going to do is basically uh, let's enumerate our intervals, okay? Let's use numbers to enumerate them. So this is interval 1, interval 2, and um, interval 1, interval 2, and then interval number 3, okay? So um, we're going to pick test values on each interval, and we're going to plug it into uh, the der first derivative function to see what sign the first derivative has on these different intervals. Okay? For interval number 1, uh, I'm going to pick a number between 1 and negative 1, uh, 0 and negative 1. I can use, let's use, um, let's see, we can use x equals 1 half for this. For interval 2, um, this is 2 third right here. So a number between 0 and 2 third. Let me write 2 third there so you can see it. A number between 0 and 2 third. Uh, we can use 1 half. Um, let's change the other one. This one is supposed to be negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. And this one is going to be positive 1 half. And then an easy number between 2 third and 2 uh, is 1. So let's just use 1 for that. Okay? All right. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do, our, do our test. So um, we're going to say sine of f prime. Sine of f prime. All right. So on interval 1, we uh, decided to use x equals negative one half. So, note what we are evaluating here is the sign of the derivative. Okay, we know f prime of x is equal to what is f prime of x equal to again? It's um six x minus nine x squared. So this is the function we are evaluating the sign of the derivative in. Okay, so we're going to go. So for this one, we're going to look at f prime of one half of negative one half. Remember, all I care about is the sign. I don't care about the value, okay? So we don't have to work it all the way. So we're going to do 6 times negative 1 half minus 9 times negative 1 half square. What is the sign of this? If you look at this, we can clearly see that the sign is going to be negative because this term is going to be negative and this minus gets canceled out by the square and this is just minus. And then when you subtract the negative numbers, uh, you always have a negative result, so it's going to be negative. Okay, let me just illustrate that to you. If you time these two together, you get negative 3. And then when you square that, you get uh, positive 1 fourth times 9. It gives you negative 9 over 4. So we can see that in this case, it's going to have a negative sign. Okay, remember all we care about is the sign. So the sign of f prime on the first interval is minus. Um, let's do that, put that to the side, it's negative. Now, um, let's look at interval number two. Interval number two, uh, we have x equals positive one half. So we're gonna evaluate the first derivative at that value. So we're gonna have six times positive one half minus nine times positive one half square. Okay, so uh, what is this gonna be? This is going to be 9 over 4. This is going to be uh, 3. 9 over 4 is 2 and a quarter, which is smaller than 3. So we can see that the sign here is going to be positive since we're sub subtracting a bigger, a smaller number from a bigger number. Okay? Let's do some more arithmetic so it's obvious uh, what I'm saying. So this is 3 minus, if you times this together, it's going to be 9 over 4. And it's the same thing as 3 minus 2 and a quarter. All right, and you can see that the answer is going to be positive. So this right here is positive. All right, last interval, uh, interval number three, is x equals one. 
So we're going to evaluate the derivative when x is 1. So we're going to go 6 times 1 minus 9 times 1 squared. Let's go that down a little bit. Um, so what is that going to be? We can clearly see that that is going to be a negative result because um, we're subtracting a smaller number from a bigger number, right? 6 minus 9, 6 is smaller. Um, uh, we subtract ne the negative number is bigger. So this one is negative. We have like that. So the interval is um, minus. Okay? So there goes the sign. We are asked to find the sign of f and also the sign of f double prime. Okay, so now we're going to shift our attention to find the sign of f double prime. I'm going to draw an identical interval. Let's put it, straighten it down here, right here, line it up. Um, so this is hot negative 1 using the same um, calibration method. That's 0, that's 1, and that's 2. All right, now I want to graph the... Um, critical point, because when you're looking at the sign of f double prime, you're focusing on your, uh, I mean, your potential points of inflection, all right, so that's x equals um, one third, all right, so let's partition our intervals, I'll draw the um, upper and lower bounds first, and then I'm going to put in my uh, potential points of inflection, so this is the lower boundary of our interval, that's the upper boundary of our interval, and then the point of inflection is one third, so it's right here. Okay. All right. So now um, we are looking for the sine of sine of um, f double prime. Okay. So we have two intervals here. There's less than the other one. Um, let's call this interval A, and then this one interval B. For interval A, we need to pick a number between negative one and one third to plug into the function, our der second derivative to find the sine, okay? Um, an easy number to use will be x equals zero. And then on the second interval, interval b, a number between one third and two that's easy to work with, uh, we can just simply use x equals one, okay? So now what we're doing is we're looking at the sine of f double prime. We're figuring out the sine of f double prime, all right? So what function are we considering here? f double prime of x is equal to, um, what's the f second derivative again? 6 minus 18x, 6 minus 18x, okay? So interval a, we elected to use x equals 0 as our test value to determine the sign of the second derivative there. So we're going to evaluate the second derivative at x equals 0. So I have 6 minus 18 times 0, uh, which is equal to 6. And what I what do I care about here? Uh, all I care about is the sign. So it's a positive number. So in that interval, the second derivative is positive. Okay? And then uh, interval B, we said to use x equals 1 because it's easy. F double prime of 1 is equal to 6 minus 18 times 1. Uh, which is equal to negative 12, and that is negative. So we see that on the second interval, B, our second derivative is negative. All right, so for part C, um, we're going to use the uh, sign chart um, in the uh, first derivative test to determine the extrema first and then concavity with the concavity test, all right? So part C, um, let's determine what our extrema are um, using our sign chart. Uh, so let's see. Um, the first derivative test tells us that um, if the function changes, if this derivative changes from positive to negative, then you have, a, you have an extrema um, there. So Let's go ahead and uh, look at this. In this, from uh, negative 1 to 0, the derivative is negative. So it's increasing on this interval, the function. And then it's positive. I'm sorry, it's decreasing. So it's decreasing on this interval. And then here, it's positive, so it's increasing. And then here, it is negative, so it's decreasing. 
All right. So can you see what the extrema um, are here? So uh, let's look, let's focus on the extrema at the interior first, and then we'll go to the ex exterior next. So it was decreasing here and then increasing. So that makes this one right here. This is going to be a minimum. Okay. If you're decreasing and then increasing, you have a low point right there. And then here it's increasing. Imagine if you're going up and then you start going down. What kind of extrema is that? This is your. This is going to be a maximum. Okay. These are locals, okay? And then here, <clears throat> if you decrease down to this included endpoint, since you're descending down to this endpoint, this is going to be a low point, which is going to be um, a uh, local min. Imagine descending down to a point, that point in this, in this local environment to be a low point. And this is a point where you're descending from, so this point right here is going to be a maximum, a local maximum. All right? Okay, uh, so... Let's state where it's increasing, decreasing, and then we'll state the extrema. Okay, so for part C, let's shift it up a little bit so that I can see the graph, the chart, because this chart basically helps us do everything else, all right? So for part C, um, it's increasing. Um, F, F is the one that's increasing. So F is increasing on um, from 0 all the way to positive one, no, actually from zero to two thirds. All right, so because that's where the first derivative is positive. All right, and then decreasing, it's decreasing on two intervals. It's decreasing from negative one to zero, union to third to uh, two. That's where it's decreasing on, okay? And then our extrema, Extrema, we have um, local max um, at x equals, let's see what does it say up there, x equals negative 1, and um, another local max at 2 thirds. In order for us to find which one is the absolute max, we just have to plug these values into the original function and then go from there. Um, and then we have local mean, local mean at uh, x equals 0, which was an interior extrema, and an endpoint extrema of 2. All right? These are where they're at. They're not the values, OK? So um, now let's take a look at uh, the situation concerning the concavity, OK? So when is it concave up? When is it concave down? You look at it. You use the concavity test. Uh, concavity test tells you that. Um, if the second derivative is positive, the f is going to be concave up, and if it's negative, it's going to be concave down. All right. So that's basically the, the behavior of f using these signs right here. So let's go ahead and write that down. So f is concave up. Um, so f is concave up. Concave up from um, on the interval. Uh, negative one all the way to one third, all right, and it is concave down, concave down from um let's see, it's concave down from one third all the way to two. Okay, so this is the interval where it's increasing, decreasing, and then the local extrema you have the max and the mean. These are all for f. Okay, all right. Now let's shift our attention to part. D, where we're to sketch a graph of the function. Now, in order to sketch a graph of the function, all we just simply do is we're going to merge uh, these two graphs together. I'm going to title the center behavior of f, behavior of f. Okay, and we just combine these two graphs together, and then we can see what's happening on the, on the different um, regions. Okay, so I, com I can combine these two, bring this down, bring this down, bring this down. Uh, bring that down, and then bring that down right there. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, so let's um, combine. We're going to combine the concavity and the direction, the increasing or decreasing together to know exactly what's happening with f, okay? 
All right, so then and then that would help us generate our graph. So here on this interval, let's focus on increasing and decreasing first, which is what um, f prime tells us. On this interval, we can see that the function is decreasing. On this interval, increasing. On this interval, still increasing. On this interval, it's decreasing. Okay? Now, uh, to tell us the concavity on those intervals, we're going to look downstairs. On this interval, is concave up. On this interval, is concave up. On this interval, is concave down. And on this interval, it's concave down. All right? So this will basically help me generate generate my graph, the behavior of, of f. Okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and sketch the graph. One... one uh, component of this graph I can exploit is the fact that the, I have a, a y-intercept of zero. Okay, if you look at the original function, if you plug in zero into the graph, you notice that you get zero. So I have one point. If you want to make it really perfect, you evaluate multiple points, maybe the extrema, and it'll help. But I just want to make a possible, a possible sketch, so I'm not going to be too perfect here. So I know it's going to go through this point, which is the y, a y-intercept. Now we have our y and then the x. All right, so let's go ahead and calibrate our, our number line. Um, this is, we have, oh, let's not forget negative one. So let's use two tick marks for, this is negative one. We need zero. All right, let's do this this way. Since we're going by thirds, we need to be consistent with our calibration. Just calibrate it like this, okay? So negative one, and then we have one third, we have uh, two thirds, and all right. So one third is two third, and then that's one. One right here, and then it also goes all the way to the end of the interval, which is two. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a sketch. We know that we're going to have a minimum here. This is going to be a min. Um, and then we also have a max somewhere at, um, what do we have a max at? We have a max at two, let me go back and go. We have a max at two, two thirds. Okay, so this is going to be a low point and this is going to be a high point right here. So let's see, this is min. We let's say we have a max somewhere here. This is going to be a min. This is going to be a max. Um, and then what else do we have? And then uh, the end point is going to be a min, so we can just bring it down to somewhere here. And then the other end point was a maximum. So we're going to, let's say we start from some high point, because we know it's a maximum, we don't know exactly where it is, let's put it somewhere here. So then exactly what it is, you can put it into the function and determine. So this would be a max. So now to co connect the curves, you have to be really careful. Um, this is going to be concave up, so when we're descending, all the way down to our our min at zero, the concavity has to be upward. So we have to cave this up. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. Going down, concave up, curves like that. Okay. Now the next interval to uh, from zero all the way to two thirds, as you can see here, from zero to two thirds, we're gonna be concave up all the way to um, one third. And then concave down from there on out. Okay, so let's put let's put one third here. So this is two third. This is one third. So we're gonna be concave up all the way to uh, one third, and then concave down to two third. Okay, so we're gonna have a change change of concavity there. So it's gonna go from here to here. Let's do that again. Come now. So we're gonna cave it like this. Concave up, increasing, and then we're gonna switch it around to concave down, increasing. That right there is a point of inflection. We're supposed to state that. I'm going to state that later, but um, that was part of the solution too. So concave up and then concave down. And then uh, lastly, it just goes concave, let's see, where we are, from two third, all the, from two third all the way to two is just going to be decreasing and concave down. That's easy. So decreasing and concave down, it's going to look something like this, decreasing and concave down down. So this is a possible graph of your solution. All right. Okay. And then another thing we're supposed to state was uh, um, the point of inflection. 
Um, so a point of inflection is where F double prime changes from positive to negative. So if you look here, F double prime changed from positive to negative at one third, okay? So that point right there is a point of inflection. So this is a point of inflection, point of inflection. That's critical for the second derivative, okay? So that's supposed to be part of question C. Let's include that there, point of inflection, point of inflection. Where does that happen? Is where x is equal to one third. Okay. All right. So let's go, let's label um, the stuff we just found out on our graph. Um, this point right here. I'm going to use red. This is a local max. Local max. Right here. And then this right here is a local min. Local min. This one and that one. They are local mins. And that and this is also a local max. And then, guess what? This point right here, where that concavity changes, that's known as your point of inflection, okay? So this is your point of inflection. Point of inflection is where it changes concavity, okay? Point of inflection. All right, so increasing, decreasing, and concavity, we can just uh, list those down here. You don't have to do all this. I just want to make sure that we get a a perfect understanding as to what's going on. So I can draw a number line down. Okay, let's use a dotted line so you don't get confused. Use a dotted line. So let's look at the graph and see if we can connect it to what's going on in our chart. So from negative one all the way to zero, you notice that the graph is decreasing and it's concave up. The concavity is facing upwards, okay, on this interval right here. And then from um, zero all the way to one third the graph was increasing and it was concave up it was increasing and concave up that's what it looks like and then from one third to two, to two third this little interval right here it was still increasing but the concavity changed to concave down that's why we had a point of inflection in between them right there okay so to make it more obvious let me partition the workspace so so we have an interval there and an interval here. What I'm just doing is superimposing our chart on beneath the graph, okay? So we have it like that. Okay, and then from and then from the on the last interval, from um, two third all the way down to two, what do we notice with the graph? The graph is simply decreasing, okay? It's decreasing, and what about the concavity? Is concave down. All right, so that basically shows you um, how to determine the behavior of f using um, f prime and f double prime. All right, so that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here. Uh, please post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip so I can make improvements for the future. And if you liked it, I appreciate a thumbs up. Um, and feel free to share with your friends. More clips can be found at matlabservice.com slash calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.